Hi everyone and welcome back to another CM conference call. I'm Louisa Daly, a CM reporter, and I'm delighted to be joined by Pamela Akuli, who is CEO of Just Like Me Picture Books. Today we're going to learn more about her picture books and kind of explore the relationship between tech and DNI. Morning Pamela, how are you doing? Morning Louisa, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem, glad you're here. Um, <laughs> so could you kind of tell um, the Watchers listeners um, about <laughs> your books and kind of what it is, why you launched it, what's the message behind it? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a mother of three boys of mixed heritage. And in 2017, my eldest son Walter was diagnosed with autism and he was nonverbal. So he really struggled to communicate. Um, but although he struggled to communicate verbally, we soon realized that he had like this love affair with books. So although he didn't understand the words, he would gravitate towards the imagery. So, for example, if he was hungry or thirsty, he used to go to the same book every single time, pick that book, bring it to us, open that page and say it was, a, for example, a kid having a drink and he'll point at it all the time. And at first we thought it was like a little bit of a fluke. We thought he was just wanting us to read the story, but then he kept going to the same pages every single time he wanted something. And then one day me and my husband Alex were just like, maybe he's actually telling us he wants a drink. And lo and behold, that's exactly what he was doing. And we thought, oh my God, that's so special and that's so fascinating. So let's get loads of books where Walter can see himself in the pages of books. Um, and trying to get a mixed race autistic child as a protagonist in a picture book was pretty non-existent. Um, and I got really frustrated. And I, I also felt really annoyed and saddened by it because I grew up um, not see myself represented in books and I kind of thought by the time I have my children that wouldn't be the case anymore um, but it was sadly so I'm very much the kind of person who is like okay if it's not out there I'm gonna either find it or create it myself and that's exactly what I did so I created just like me books that champion diversity and inclusiveness so we wrote my first book Buster Finds His Beat which is this book here and the character Buster is very much like my son. Um, and this book is a really fun and engaging book about a character who's autistic and some of the struggles that he has with the world, but also what his strengths are. And that was really key for me to, you know, kind of encourage that understanding and empathy. And Walter absolutely loved it. He kept pointing, going, me, me, Walter. And I was just like, yeah, that's you. That's great. Um, but although he loved it, he didn't really understand the story and his intention span was very limited. And I kept thinking like, oh, how can I get him to get more engagement? We've got that first step where he recognizes himself, but I want him to you know, understand the story and engage with the story. And uh, one day he was kind of fixated with his tablet as most kids are. And I looked at him and I thought, oh, I really wish he could get that level of engagement that he has with his tablet because he's such a tech whiz um, with his tablet. And that's where we had this kind of like aha moment. Um, and I thought, what if we created an app using technology that he's familiar with? Um, and you can download that app for free and using the app with the book, it will bring the story to life. So you literally place your screen over the book, you can interact with the story, you can move the characters, the sound in there. Um, and it's a really kind of immersive engagement experience of learning. Um, so we created the things that we wished existed and now Just Like Me Books are the UK's first interactive, inclusive picture books that uses AR to champion diversity and inclusiveness um, and bring stories to life. Yeah, that sounds honestly amazing. I mean, you know, Thank that's you. a great thing there. And I think it's really interesting how technology is kind of just a supplementary kind of role. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it adds and it can, you know, completely push representation forwards. And yeah. you know, what's your kind of view on that? How can technology push representations forward? Otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to let you know, also, like before I had children, I was definitely one of those parents who was just like, when I have children, they're not going to have tablets, they're not going to have screen time and things like that. And uh, look where we are now. <laughs> so when it comes to technology, it can be a huge source for good. But also, we need to be thinking about the people who are creating the technology. We say that uh, technology is for everybody. So we need to make sure that it is being made by everybody. And then it's accessible by for everybody as well. And that's exactly what 
we are doing. And it's really important when we're talking about representation, we're just talking, we're talking about it in all the different sectors as well. So, you know, education and manufacturing and media and publishing and sport. Um, and for us, it's, you know, when you see yourself in something, it gives you that confidence and that, that spark of inspiration. But for us as well, we need to realise, we've realised through personal experiences that not everybody thinks and sees the world the same. And that's something that's actually, that should be celebrated and encouraged. So by using the technology that we are using, which is AR technology, we are fusing the real world and the virtual world together. And we're showing people that regardless of your gender or your background or your ability, that you can still have that immersive experience through technology. Um, so it's super important when we talk about representation that we're not just focusing on one key area or we're not just focusing on you know, gender or race. We need to be expansive and making sure that technology is reaching everybody, especially those from marginalised communities. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, if it's more diverse and inclusive at every kind of stage in the process yeah. from like, you know, creators to the testers to the people. Who Absolutely. Them, like that will yeah. better the product and then better, you know, the experiences of everyone using it. So Absolutely. And then when you break it down, it, it's it's simple, right? But like we make it so complicated and, I, and for us, we're just like, you know, we're constantly hearing, you know, companies say like, you know, we want to stand out from our competitors. We want to be different. And um, I'm thinking, well, hire people who think differently, who are from different backgrounds. And that's only going to enrich the whole process. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's super simple. And, and, I'm, and I'm very confident that the world is slowly opening their eyes and adjusting to this and seeing different as good as a opposed to different as being weird or you know it's something that's going to only enrich and in, and enrich everybody yeah absolutely so what's sort of big plans for things like me books what are you going to kind of stay in the education sector what's what's your thoughts yeah so for us we're using um especially the, using the technology ar we never wanted it to be kind of gimmicky it has to have a real serve a real purpose um, and really help and that's exactly what we're doing in the education sector so as well as bringing out new books we are also working with publishers and independent authors and we now have the capability in the team to be able to convert other people's books into AR experiences. So that doesn't necessarily have to be picture books. It could be any book with illustrations. And that's something that we're working on at the moment and we're really super excited about. Um, but for us, we are going to focus um, for the next couple of years primarily within the education system. Um, because for us, we, it's really important that, you know, when we're teaching about you know, diversity and differences and empathy and understanding, that this starts at early years, yeah? But, and then it continues through to higher education, to university and into the workplace, because we don't just stop learning when we like, you know, we get that degree or certificate or whatever. We're constantly learning. And there's people who are, you know, adults who are working in different sectors who have got you know different struggles they've got their strengths as well but they are struggling in certain environments and for us even speaking personally myself who's got adhd i'm always constantly thinking like oh no i really wish this technology existed when i was younger because that would have really helped me with my focus that's something that i still really really struggle with and there's people out there in the working environment who are also struggling and i'm and it's really important for us that you know that when we're talking about education, we're talking about inclusiveness, we're talking about representation, that that starts early on and continues right through to the workplace and afterwards. Yeah. So, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pamela, thank you so much for your time. It was so great speaking to you again. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. And thanks, everyone, for watching. I'll see you next time.